they just they just plug in. People go away, and others just plug in and want to praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Speaking of going away, I, I don't know how Tim said that. Sister Fran and I are going away, but we'll be back for Thursday. So nobody's got to plug in for our service times. I'll be here. Anyway, God's... Uh, it's, it's amazing how fast summer goes by. And, uh, and, and you, you try to do... You get in these habits, whether you like it or not. You, know, you, get, you might as well make up your mind that uh, um, I put on my pants like everybody else, in one leg at a time, and there are times when I like to go to Wells and put them on. So uh, the, the issue is, so for a couple of days, we're going, we're going to run away tomorrow and be back on Thursday. So I'll be here for, for that. So enough of that. That didn't want to leave. I didn't want to leave anybody to think that we're going to be gone for a long period. We're just going for three days, and we'll be home. Uh, I'll pray for you while I'm eating lobster. So anyway, uh, for for those of you who don't like lobster, uh, it's on, it's on sale at Big Y right now. So uh, <laughs> thank you, thank you. I. It, if it be all right, I'm, I'm not going to, uh, I'm, if it be all right, I, I just want to share something. Uh, I, for all of you that, that weren't here in Sunday school, I recommend that, that you uh, get on our YouTube site and uh, listen to Brother Bud's Sunday school lesson today. For such short notice to be able to jump in, and you know what that tells me? There's a man of the word. He's in the word. And, and, and the word is constantly working something in his innermost. And um, as I was sitting there listening to, I, I probably heard, I thought I had heard probably every message that's ever been taught on that subject matter where Jesus was led away of the spirit. And... Uh, Every time I read things like that, it brings up a million questions, you know. I mean, uh, it says he was led away of the Spirit in two or three places. It's, it doesn't use, King James Bible doesn't use the word Satan in, the, in that context. It uses the word uh, devil or diabolos, which means the accuser. Um, if... if if, if you do a study of Satan, you'll find out he had two basic names. Um, I'm still in a, I'm still in the enlightenment stage on the title Lucifer uh, because of the fact that in, in, the King, in the King James Bible or even in the, in the Hebrew where it's used in Isaiah 14, it's called Lucifer. The word is a verb there. It's not a noun. And what it means is the light bearer or the light bringer. And to me, the one who was the one to be the light bearer was Adam. And so just as easily could be translated in that 14th chapter was the one that was in the garden was Adam. We know the serpent was there because the scripture says so. But I don't think he was the one that, that was the light bearer. He's not a bearer of light. He's a bearer of false light. He's a bearer of darkness. His heart is dark. And so he's, he's the bearer of that. Anyway, let's go there. But if you, if you read carefully the scriptures, you begin to realize it says, and the devil led Jesus up into extremely high mountains. My thought was, why did he go? See, most of us just read the Bible and say, "Well, that's it." But we, you know, for a long, long time, I'm I'm one of them, them guys that 
I read something and I question it. I say, Lord, you've got to show me. Why'd you go? I mean, he had every, every I, Brother Bud said it exactly. He, he emptied himself of deity. He didn't empty himself of divine nature. And I like the thought that Brother Bud brought in that immediately after his baptism, he was led into that place. Okay, and then Brother Bud dealt with the, the principle of the, he fasted for 40 days. Well, who told him to do that? See, sometimes we need to learn to question things so we can find the secrets of the Spirit, so that we can understand the realities of the Spirit. Because I think a lot of times we spend too much time trying to figure out God's plan and program by our natural mind. Amen. And not knowing the real dimensions of the Spirit. The Bible says, try the spirits. See that they be of God. And I find a lot of time, even in believers, uh, Brother Bud made it really clear that we're tested. It, we're all tried. But we think it's always some natural thing out here. No, look beyond what's happening in the natural and see what the Spirit. That's why it says in Revelation, he said, we need to see what the Spirit is saying to the churches. He didn't say one church. He said churches. So when God is moving by his spirit through these dimensions, you have to begin to realize he's really saying the same thing. The biggest problem we have is who's hearing. The hearing ear and the seeing eye is of God. And if we don't hear rightly, how many times do you know that, that, that you, every time you read the Bible or you listen to a word, you hear it differently? differently same person same word same everything but you hear it differently because God is trying to get us to a place where we hear things the way he declares it and so as I was listening to brother Bud the Lord was opening up some new dimensions to me the first test was he's hungered personal Say, it has to do with my personal life in Christ. Are you listening? The second place he took him was to a pinnacle of the temple. The second had to do with his place of worship. Every man wants to have his own choice where he's supposed to worship. The whole principle here is a principle that, that we have in the book of Revelation about the Nicolaitan spirit. Yes, that's it. If you really study the word, I understand that uh, a lot of scholars have said that it, it was because of Nicholas, one of the six, one of the six appointed. Uh, at the time Stephen was appointed, one of the six was appointed, and he ended up becoming one that led people off. Well, that, that could be true, but I'm going to tell you what it really means. The word Nicolaitan means super victorious. Have you ever been in a charismatic? Because you don't have it. You don't have it in, 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 in most places. But somebody get that super spiritual spirit. They're more spiritual than every, anybody, including the leaders. Hyper spiritual. I got the answer to everything. Just follow their life for 40 years. Okay? And so that's the picture we have in that second dimension. We have the picture of how it is in your church life, your, your, that place. Are, are, you, are you the center of attention? He took him to the pinnacle of the tension, temple. Are you, the, are, you the, are, are you the most important one or is Jesus the most important one? Even Jesus taught us. He said, when you come in, don't take the preeminent seat. Don't just march your butt down in the front and sit down there so the leadership can see you. He said, take the seat in the back 
And he said, after you've been there a while, if they invite you up front and they begin to recognize you, that's the way Jesus taught us to do. Okay? And the third dimension we find of what Brother Bud shared was the fact he took him to an exceedingly, everybody say exceedingly. Exceedingly. Brother Bud read this whole thing about what mountain it was that he took him up into, you know, the natural mind saying, well, they can only see around the city, around Jerusalem, you know, and um, the holy city and all of that really is a picture of God's demand for the kingdom. God's raising a people that's going to rule the earth. Not only rule the earth, but rule creation. I'm going to make a statement here that some of you say, that ain't right. But the Bible says, everybody we're here, we get in this charismatic thing, and we all want to be ministered. Everybody wants their angel, right? Oh, give me an angel. Let, her, let this angel minister me. But the Bible says, Paul wrote and says, don't you know the day will come when you'll judge angels? Yes. Say man, man. Full, of Christ, full of Christ, is greater, greater. than angels. And that's the kingdom. And the kingdom is to rule the planet. The kingdom is to rule creation. The kingdom is not limited to just the church. It's a dimension beyond. Now that doesn't give you this excuse that we got in this modern day of everybody leaving the church thinking I can do this thing on my own. God does everything decently in order. You need to have your butt in a local church. You could miss the whole thing. Doesn't stop being a born again believer, but it sure could cause you to miss your gifting and your calling in God if you don't get to the place God destines you to grow up in. That's, that's just the way God does it. I don't know. Now, why did I go over there? That has nothing to do with the book of James. But, but, um, but here's the issue. We've been, we've been doing James. I'm going to talk a little bit about James, and, uh, and I'm not going to take too long today. But, but here's the issue. This is what I want to say. We are living in an hour when we get so excited about all this hyper-spiritual activity. We get impressed by it. Oh, man, it looks like this. But you never really know. What God does lasts. It does, it does some permanent things. I had the opportunity. Uh, how many ever heard of a guy by the name of Stanley Frodsham? Ah, see? You need to do a little research. Stanley Frodsham was a man who was born in the 1800s in Britain. Was a friend of Smith Wigglesworth at, at that time, or he got to know Smith Wigglesworth in that time, and uh, in his later years, Stanley Frodsham came to America. His, uh, the whole basis was to try to set up business in Canada, and they ended up in America. And uh, in, in the midst of it, he was a great scribe, a great writer, and the first I ever heard about him was from a guy by the name of Bill Britton. And Bill Britton was a young a young uh, youth pastor who was influenced by Stanley Frodsham because Stanley Frodsham was the editor of the Evangel, which the Assembly God is an Assembly God newspaper, and he went to the church that Bill Britton was the was the youth pastor in, and through the midst of it all, I, I heard I heard a couple of times, and then I just read this biography the other day, and I thought about what the gifting was in Stanley Frodsham's life and how God used him to have such great discernment and understanding of the movings of God. 
And here's what he said. I get up at 4.30 every morning. The first minute we hear, oh, God, I can't do that. But he said, I get up at 4.30 every morning to meet with the Lord because the Bible says his mercies are new every morning. And he said, knowing full the day, I'm going to be tested and tried beyond my capability. Beyond my capability to resist. And he said, the only way I can do it is to get to know the Lord. And he said, sometimes if Jesus had to pray all night, he said, there's got to be times when I got to pray. And immediately I'm reading this biography and I'm, I'm getting convicted. You know, I love my sleep. And I'm like, Danny, I love to eat. And uh, there, there are all these things, but God is trying to build us, listen, beloved, into a people that not can just be Christians while we're in here. But we can influence others when we go out there. And I, I'm going to let you in a little secret. I love what Brother Bud said about baptism today. We, we baptized uh, Gabriel. And the Lord, I, I, the minute I put him in the water, I, I, I had a vision. I, I seen him. You know, the, they named him right. Because the word means the announcer or the numberer. That's what his name means. He's the announcer. And God takes people who are one way or got one personality or, or one character, but when he comes on them, he changes them totally from what they are into something else. Didn't God say, I'll take the foolish things of this world to confound the wise? Don't ever think you're smarter than God. Don't ever think you're smarter than the way he does things. And you got to begin to walk in a way that you allow him to use you because you just never know. If you let Isaiah run around the city for two and a half years naked, what do you think he's going to do with you? Now, don't go acting crazy and stripping your clothes off and none of the dumb stuff, you know. But I'm saying God can use you. Are we willing? Are we? He'll enable us. God's enablement is called grace. Are you listening? God's enablement is called grace. And so I want to, I want to, talk a little bit, you know. Stir with me to the book of James and I'm not going to talk too long, I don't think. The book of James chapter 1. This is like doing the book of Proverbs in Sunday school. We're having a hard time getting through this, this book. How many, how many services have I been working on the first chapter? Uh-huh. Hallelujah. Anyway. I'm, I'm, again, I'm reading out of the Revised Standard Version. I, I don't have the King James. I had a thought I wanted to deal with, and I'm going to uh, speak about that a little bit. But I have a purpose for it. Turn me to um, James, first chapter. Um, let, me, let me back up to something I've already covered, verse 16. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good endowment and every perfect gift is from above. Say, have I got anything good, I got anything good. In, my life? in my life? It came from God. 
I didn't go to Dale Carnegie. I didn't do all of that. But anything good I got in my life came from God. Coming down from the Father of lights, whom there is no variation or shadow to be changed. In other words, God's righteousness. Come on. God's righteousness is unchanging. I don't care what they say in this modern age. I don't care how they talk in this modern age. I don't care how they argue. God has a pattern of righteousness. His pattern of righteousness was first laid out in the Ten Commandments. That's not legalism. He said, I'm going to take that which was written on tables of stone and I'm going to write them on the tables of your heart. So that's not legalism. That is God's plan, his way. He laid it out, all right? Um, there's no va variation or shadow to, due to change. Of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruit. Now I covered all of this in previous Thursday night previously. We are a first fruit. If you're a first fruit, that means there's more to come. But let me tell you something. The rest don't come until the first is right. Okay, I mentioned this. I mentioned this on Thursday about first fruits. First fruit for a farmer, usually or typically, what the farmer did with the first fruit was because it matured first, it became ripe, it was better, it was almost double portion. They would harvest it, put it in a bag, take it into the barn, hang it where the rats and the bats and the mice and the animals couldn't get to it until it dried out and became seed corn. Then it was planted in the ground as seed corn. Say, my life been sowed in this earth as seed crop. That doesn't mean that the enemy won't come and put tares in your field. The key is don't marry one. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. Know this, say know this, know this, my beloved brethren, my brethren. let every man be quick to hear, yeah. slow to speak, and slow to anger. For the anger doth not work, the, the anger of man doth not work the righteousness of God. Is this a friend who will tell you the truth? Every day I drive down the highway, I'm under test. I, 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 I'm, they're talking, you know, they're talking about the Apple car and the smart car, the new smart car that's coming out. And <clears throat> it's supposed to be driven by a computer. I just hope that's a whole lot smarter than a lot of the people I meet on a highway. Because I have concerns. I think most people, and no, I'm, yes. yeah, I better not say that. It's, I just, I, I just be careful, you know. But I, I said to, I said to Sister Fran, when you go to the, when you go to the grocery store and they're running over you with their carts, I always say to her, can you imagine what they're like when they're behind the wheel? Yeah. For the anger man does not work the righteousness of God. I thought about this while Brother Bud was, was speaking because he was talking about hunger. Remember, remember Jesus, his first test, yeah. and he was hungered? You know, right in the next chapter, this is what Jesus said. He said, 
the thing to hunger and thirst after is righteousness. If you hunger and thirst after righteousness, you will be filled. He didn't say you're going to go away hungry. If you hunger and thirst after righteousness, righteousness means doing right. For the anger man does not work the righteousness of God. Therefore, put away all filthiness, rank growth of wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted, or the King James Bible says the engraved, or the scripted. The, the word in the Greek, what it means is he takes the word, and where he wants it to go is he takes his knife and begins to carve away what would hinder the growth of that word, and he plants it. Are you listening? Yep. That's what God does. He puts it in the right place, in the right person, at the right time. He knows. But the thing is, he trusts us. Back in Peter, it says this. He said, don't, don't you know that you, you are stewards of the grace of God? Say, I didn't know that. I thought grace is something that just came down from heaven, you know, and just poured on me and all that. No, no, grace is given you in the Holy Ghost. You got the Holy Ghost, you got grace. But you are a steward of it. You let it work in your life, or you don't. It's your choice. Grace is what works out in your life, the thing that God wants to give you righteousness, right doing. This is the whole theme here of James' teaching. James' teaching is, don't tell me you got faith in God. It, it, Corey Sfluid always said it like this. Sister Fran quotes this all the time. Knowledge of a matter is not possession of it. Are you listening? No, it doesn't mean you can't have it. It's there available. But it's empowered or engrafted into your life by grace. I, I, I thought about this as I was, as I was back during worship. I, th I thought about this. It, Paul, in writing to the church at Galatia, was, said this. He said to him in the fifth chapter, he said this. He said, he said, walk after the Spirit, and you'll not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Next verse. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. Say, my flesh, my flesh. isn't my skin. It's <laughs> my flesh is that part of me that's connected to the world around me, the world I've been planted into. But he said there is a way to defeat the desires of that flesh. If you walk in the spirit. Well, I don't know how to walk in the spirit. I never had to walk in the Spirit. Say, grace empowers me to walk in the Spirit. Say, thank you, grace. Oh, God, I want to preach. No, I, I, can, I can hear Kelly saying, yeah, they brought Jesus into the temple to present him before the Lord. And he said, all of a sudden, here comes Anna. Her name means grace. You can't have Jesus and not have grace. But grace doesn't let you get away with stuff. Grace is that which is, empowers you to walk in the reality. He said, don't be just a hearer of the word, but be a doer of the word. If you're a doer of the word, that's because grace is working in your life to empower you to walk out this life of God. Say, I can't be like Jesus. You can want to, 
but wanting to don't get you there. You've got to have that empowerment, that reality of grace to work in your life to cause you to begin to become a doer of the word. That's why Paul wrote it over there in Galatians. He said, if you walk in the spirit. Say, walk in the spirit. I'll not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Say, my flesh lusteth against my spirit. They're contrary to one another. Say, God, why did you do that to me? To test you. To see which one you would choose. To try you. Most of man's temptations or tests, they don't come from the outside. They come from the inside. It's what God is trying to work out in our lives. The Bible says work out your salvation. Work it out. Get it working out of you. Get it working out of you. You begin to walk in the spirit. You, you begin to realize there's nothing around me that has any, any desire. That I, I don't. The longer you serve the God, have you found out there's a lot of stuff you used to want to do you don't do no more? Is that all right? I used to dream about. I used to. I used to dream about the day I. I, I get me a four hundred horsepower car and, and 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 go to drag strip. Now that I could afford one, I no longer have the ability to control one. And I don't even have to build one. I just go down to the local Dodge dealer and get me a 700 horsepower Hellcat. It'd probably get me in hell. <laughs> you know what? If you're walking the Spirit, you're not fulfilled the lust of the flesh. Thank you, Jesus. But be ye a doer of the word. Oh, I got, I got to back up. The engrafted word which is able to save your soul. Okay? It's able to what? Say my soul leads me astray. I get to wanting a lot of stuff I don't need. I think I need it. I'm sure I need it. God, I got to lay everything aside to have it. And then all of a sudden, you begin to pray. You seek the face of God and you find out you can get along with that. Let me ask you this question. If, if, you, if, if you got everything you wanted that would give you the comfortable American life, the dream life. You never have to worry about anything. And the next day the phone rings and it's God. And he says, I got a job for you. Oh yeah, oh, well, whereabouts? Haiti. And you got all this stuff. Say, God wouldn't ask me to do that. Don't hold your breath. God might ask you to do a lot of things you may not want to do. I mean, I, I said to J.R. when we were when we were in Zurich, when we were coming back from Kenya, I said, it wouldn't be hard to live here. But the difference is, when you're in Kenya, in the backwoods, would it be okay to live there? Yes. 
Say God is trying to save our soul. Really is. Well, let me see. I was going to deal with something about putting off. I'm going to, I'm going to wait till Thursday to cover that. Okay, is that all right? Because that word lay aside, lay aside, put aside, you ought to hear all the stuff that God wants us to put off. He didn't say he's going to take it away. He said we're to put it off. And then all the stuff that he, that he says to us that we're to put on. We would really love it, oh God, if you just come down here and give us a hookah machine meeting and everything would just be fine. All I got to do is soak. That's the latest fad. Soak. Uh-huh. You might end up looking like a prune. The issue is what we need is to say when God speaks to us, say, yes, Lord. We will walk in your way. We will become doers of the word, not hearers only. We will walk in the power and the might of the spirit of the living God. We will do it in agreement. And once we come into agreement, only then, can he enable us supply grace whereby we are empowered to walk in the way. Amen? I can't do it on my own. We're always looking, listen to me. If we want to be honest, we'd always be looking for a quick fix. I wish somebody would give me a prophetic word. I love prophetic words. We love it, just love it if somebody would just give us a prophetic word and that would do it. No, God will give us a prophetic word to either straighten us out or get us in gear and moving forward in another direction. But we're still going to do it. The prophetic word is not going to do it. Okay? Or we wish maybe that somebody just lay hands on us and we'd fall out and we'd get up, and it'd all be okay. True. Say, God, God demands, of me, demands of me, first, that I have faith. First, I have faith. Secondly, Secondly, that I'm willing, that I'm willing to, allow to allow what he gives me in faith, me faith. to become Walked out in my life. Amen. I could go through James. James in here talks about, he talks about the man. He said, a man that, that, that just to hear the word, he doesn't walk it out in his life. He doesn't put the work in his life. He's like a guy who goes to the mirror. Goes to the mirror. Goes to the mirror. And the Bible says, the King James Bible says, and he sees his image. The word for image there in the mirror is the word Genesis. It means that what the rebirth or the new birth has generated him to. And then it says he goes his own way, say, own way, and forgets what he really is. Say God, God wants, us wants us to look, to look at, the at the perfect law of liberty. That's what he says. What's that liberty? That's that freedom from Adam and all his ways. Say Adam, Adam has no more place, no more place in, here. in here. Say he was crucified, he was crucified. at Calvary. I became identified with that in water. Buried that old man. I don't have to carry him around on my back no more. And all his stink. And God gave me the Christ, the new spirit, the Holy Ghost, to walk and live according to the new life. 
the new way. Amen? Say, I'm not going to forget. I'm going to continue to look in the Word and see what God says I should be. Amen? So if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. All things are passed away. All things have become new. Amen? Should I quote the next one? Well, I stopped. See, that's where most people quote that far, and then they forget the rest. But he says, and all things are of God. Say, God, God. even allows even the enemy, enemy. To, come to come my way. So I'm tested, and I'm tried. So that when he's done testing, and he's done trying, I'll be just like him. Amen? So can I quote the 11th commandment? Quit your whining about life. Say God has a plan. And I ought to thank God every day. He's fitting me in it. Thank you, Jesus. Shall we stand? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I just thank you for those that are here today. Thank you for our visitors. I pray, God, that the word of the Lord would leap in their hearts. May the womb of their spirits leap with your presence. And Father, I just pray in the powerful name of Jesus that you will quicken us. Let us desire to walk in the spirit so that we'll not fulfill the lusts of our flesh. Enable us. I'm You've enabled us, Father. You've enabled us by your spirit to walk after your heart. Have your way with us, God. Lord, as we go about our week, God, as we go about doing what you want us to do, make us the salt of the earth, God. Let us be the light of the world. God, let us walk in the way that you would give us to walk, we pray. In the powerful name of Jesus. And everyone said? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen.